Normally at this point we will do a lesson of reflection. Today, for the first time, I'm going to do something of a commentary. I've titled this commentary on the Ununited Methodist Church. I'm starting it with two well-known quotes for us Christians. Love one another as I have loved you. Love your neighbor as yourself. We as Christians all know well the above commandments of Jesus the Christ. Love for all persons, no matter how they look, what their education or earnings may be. Love them quite simply for the fact that they were created by God and born of a human mother. To deny them love is to deny them the two basics of their humanity. First, that they were created by God. Every, crea every creature on earth, bar none, was created by God. That after birth, upon reaching maturity and decision, the individual chooses to join the classes of evil, becoming one of the devil's creatures doesn't negate divine creation. And God makes no mistakes. We are, at birth, exactly as God intends us to be. Heterosexual, homosexual, transsexual. These are all by God's designs. These aren't mistakes. So too is the choice of the internal and external genitalia and the concomitant issues when a child is born XYY and XXY. When a child is born this way, this is a challenge for the parents, not the child. But unfortunately, too often the parents have allowed hate and politics to alter their decisions. They don't make the correct decision, and the parents harm the child. The second fact of humanity, born of a human woman mother, can't any more be taken away from a person than can divine creation. Though the woman may disown the child, that is a separate issue, more linked to family dysfunction and not politics. I went through just under a third of the Gospel of Matthew and pulled out those quotes of our Lord that he would speak to the ununited Methodist Church today. Those that refuse to recognize our gay, lesbian, and transsexual brothers and sisters are antichrists, as described in our scripture of John's first epistle the past few days. The quotation directed specifically at them today is, His commandment is this, We should believe in Jesus Christ and love one another. Do not trust every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they belong to God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus does not belong to God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, who is already in the world. We belong to God, and anyone who knows God listens to us, while anyone who does not belong to God refuses to hear us. This is how we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of deceit. The schism is the Methodist Church, of the Methodist Church, is far worse and more profound than that between the Catholics and the Lutherans with the posting of the 93 treatises by Martin Luther. All Catholics and Lutherans believed in Christ and still followed his teachings of love. These separation Methodists don't. They believe in their hate as primary and more important than any 
fucking filth. Their hate and their need to be politically right, far right, is more important to them than God. They are no longer Christians, for if they were, the grievous mortal sin of putting themselves and their decisions ahead of God so shows such immense hubris and hypocrisy that they didn't just come to this belief overnight. They have been under the control of the devil for a very long time. And we must pray for their souls. Here are the quotes from our Lord Jesus Christ, speaking to our former brethren. May they break free from the hold of the devil and come back to the love of the Christian community and the welcoming arms of Christ. Chapter 7, 12 do unto others whatever you would have them do to you. This is the law and the prophets. 712 Stop judging that you may not be judged. For as you judge, so will you be judged. And the measure with which you measure will be measured out to you. 9 Twelve fourteen. He heard this and said, Those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. Go and learn the meaning of the words, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I did not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. Eleven fifteen. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The next one is a bit longer, 12, 25, 26. But he knew what they were thinking and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be laid waste, and no town or house divided against itself will stand. And if Satan drives out Satan, he is divided against himself, and how then will his kingdom stand? Continuing with that same section, 1230. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. Continuing, 1235-37. A good person brings forth good out of a store of goodness, but an evil person brings forth evil out of a store of evil. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will render an account for every careless word they speak. But your words, you will be acquitted, and by your words, you will be condemned. The next 15, 3, 6. And why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever curses father or mother shall die. But you say, Whoever says to father or mother, Any support you might have had from me is dedicated to God, need not honor his father. You have nullified the word of God, for the sake of your tradition. 15.7.9 Hypocrites well did Isaiah prophesy about you when he said, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts. Two more sections. 15, 10, 12. He summoned the crowd and said to them, Hear and understand. It is not what enters one's mouth that defiles that person, but what comes out of the mouth is what defiles one. And the last section, 16, 23. He turned and said to Peter, 
Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. That is what the separation Methodists are doing. Thinking as human beings do. Thinking as the devil wishes them to do. Pray for them. Pray that they can break free of their faith. Pray that the devil loosens his grip or looks away for a moment so that they can regain the love of Christ. Peace be with you.